Hello and welcome back to the 5.4 notes. Uh, this is a, a section of notes about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And what we are doing is we are evaluating integrals. Uh, we're doing this by hand. Um, and before we do this, I want to make sure I write down, um, you know, the rule that we have, the theorem. And that means that if I take, if I'm trying to evaluate the integral from A to B under, of, li of little f of x, dx, then that is the same thing as taking the antiderivative, plugging in b, minus the antiderivative evaluated at a, okay? So uh, this will give me the area under the curve, um, and we will uh, try this on number six. So uh, the first thing I want to do is to take my antiderivative, and so... Um, I'm going to set this equal to, and I'm going to write x to the fourth, uh, and then I'm going to divide by my new exponent, uh, minus 2x squared, divide by my new exponent, which is 2, and then plus 3x, okay? And I'm going to evaluate this at negative 2 and positive 2, okay? And so um, what I'm going to do is kind of simplify this just a little bit. Um, and I'm going to get uh, 1 fourth x to the fourth minus x squared plus 3x evaluated at 2 and negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2 into my antiderivative. So the first thing I'm going to have is a big bracket here, okay? And if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 1 fourth um, times 2 to the fourth minus 2 squared plus 3 times 2, okay? And this is, you know, me. this is my um, f of b, okay? Um, this is me taking 2 and plugging it into my antiderivative, okay? And so now I'm going to subtract um, the function evaluated at negative 2. So I'm going to take negative 2, plug it into my antiderivative, and subtract. Okay, so now I'm going to get um, 1 fourth times negative 2 to the fourth minus the quantity negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2. Um, and put that in brackets. Okay, so this can be kind of tedious um, and grueling with our computation, but we kind of just got to go with it. Um, and so I'm going to get this. Um, I'm going to start evaluating. I'm going to go piece by piece, and I'm going to do 1 fourth times 2 to the fourth, which gives me 16. So 1 fourth times 16 uh, minus 2 squared, which is 4, and then plus 6. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, um, minus, I'm going to get 1 fourth, um, negative 2 to the fourth power is going to give me positive 16, so I'm going to multiply by 16, uh, minus negative 2 squared is going to give me 4, so just minus 4, and then minus 6, okay? So now I need to continue to evaluate this, and I'm going to go ahead and get... Um, uh, four, 1 fourth times 16, that's 16 divided by, four, uh, divided by 4, is going to give me 4. So I'm going to get 4 here, um, minus 4, and then plus 6. Okay? And then I'm going to get um, 1 fourth times 16 is going to give me 4, minus 4, and then minus 6. So... Um, what I can see here is that I'm going to take 4 minus 4, that's going to go to 0, and I'm going to get 4 minus 4, that's going to go to 0. But we do have to take care of our negative value here, um, and so we get 6 from our first term, this 6, minus negative 6, okay, which is really just 6 plus 6, which gives us 12, okay? So remember that 12, guys, is the area under the curve, okay? That's what that represents, okay? Um, and so I know this is kind of a tedious process. Um, this is very, very, very heavy on the computation, very heavy on the algebra. So you kind of have to, you know, bear with that and, uh, you know, you know, just kind of get good at that. So, um, on number 16, we're going to do that one in class. This one is kind of tricky. Um, 
this takes quite a bit, bit of manipulation before we can actually take the antiderivative and, um, you know, do the fundamental theorem, but we're going to do that one in class. Um, let's take a look at number 22. Um, in this one, you know, when I look at this, I, I look at this integrand here, and I don't know how to take the antiderivative of this, okay? So what we have to do is we have to manipulate this and we have to simplify it. So um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the integral from negative 3 to negative 1, and I'm going to split this up into y to the fifth divided by y cubed uh, minus 2y divided by y cubed dy, okay? And I'm going to continue to um, simplify this because it's still not a form I can use. And so I'm going to get um, the integral from negative 3 to negative 1. Um, y to the fifth divided by y cubed is going to simplify to y squared. And then <coughs> if I do 2y divided by y cubed, those y's divide out. And so I'm going to get this. I'm going to get minus 2 divided by y to the squared down here, okay, dy. All right, this still isn't in a decent form for me to use, so I'm going to rewrite it over here. And I'm going to write the integral from negative 3 to negative 1 of y squared minus 2 times y to the negative 2, okay, dy. And now I can take the antiderivative of this and plug in my values and see what we get. Um, this might be heavy on the fractions, so let so bear with me on this. Um, so let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. I'm going to switch up my colors here and to note that that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to do y cubed, increase my exponent by 1, divide by my new exponent, which is 3, minus 2 times y. Okay, increase my exponent by 1. That's going to give me an exponent of negative 1, and then I'm going to divide by negative 1. And then I'm going to evaluate this at negative 3 and negative 1. So uh, what I end up getting here is I end up getting, um, okay, so we've got, let me, let me rewrite this real quick so we can evaluate this. I've got 1 third y cubed plus 2 um, times y to the negative 1, that's really just um, over y, okay, evaluated at negative 3 and negative 1. So um, let's go ahead and plug these in. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative 1. I'm going to switch up my colors to show that I'm plugging in my values now. So if I plug in negative 1, that's the first one. So I'm going to put big bracket here, and I've got 1 third times negative 1 cubed plus 2 over negative 1. Okay, that's my me plugging in negative 1. And then we need to subtract and then plug in negative 3 into our antiderivative. So now I get um, 1 third times negative 3 cubed plus 2 over negative 3 and close my brackets there. Okay, so let's um, do some computation here and try and get our answer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do... One third, uh, negative one cubed is just negative one. So this is going to give me negative one third. Um, and then plus two over negative one, that's just going to be minus two over one. I'm going to keep my denominator there because I'm going to have to combine those. Um, and then I get um, negative three cubed, but that's going to give me negative 27. So I've got um, one third times negative twenty-seven, and then minus two thirds. Okay, um, and so here's what I'm gonna get. Um, I need to do, um, and you could do this a number of ways. Let me just kind of simplify this. This kind of just depends on what you want to do and how you want to go about doing it. Um, all right, so I've got negative one third minus two over one that quantity minus, um, and let me do this, let me do, uh, I'm going to keep it as fractions, negative 27 thirds, um, and then minus 2 thirds, okay? And so the reason why I'm keeping it, um, and I'm not simplifying this part right here, is because I, if I just keep that there, I already have a common denominator of 3, and so um, the only thing I would need to change is this, 
and then I can just operate within those fractions, and then we're good from there. So um, let me do um, okay. So let me change. Let me change uh, this part to have a denominator of three. So I'm going to multiply this by three and by three. So we get this. We get negative one third minus six thirds. Okay, and then minus. I'm going to go ahead and combine these. Uh, negative 27 minus 2 gives me negative 29 thirds. Okay? And so um, now we can go ahead and just simplify this. So now we get, um, I believe this is negative 7 thirds. So negative 1 minus 6 gives me negative 7 thirds. And then plus 29 thirds. And if I add those together, that's going to give me positive 22 thirds. Okay, and this is the area under the curve. Okay, and so guys, you know, it, it really kind of ultimately depends on, uh, you know, how you want to operate. There is a number of ways to go about this. You could, um, you know, distribute this negative first and then, you know, simplify your answers and find things with common, you know, denominators and do it that way. I'm just doing it the way that I see it. And so that's something that, you know, you have to practice and you guys have to, you know, just know that you're doing it the correct way, okay? And that, that's something that takes time and practice, so please uh, try and do that. All right, let's take a look at the last one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this down here so that um, I'm not going into my work. So um, hopefully if you have work, um, if you didn't go, if your work isn't going into the next problem, then go ahead and just... Uh, do it. So I've got uh, the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x minus e to the negative x dx. Okay, and this I can already go ahead and just take the antiderivative of 1 over x and e to the negative x. And so this is going to give me um, the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, and then this is going to give me uh, minus e to the negative x, keep our same exponent uh, for our um, exponential function, but I have to divide by the coefficient of my upper function, so that was negative 1, okay? And we're going to evaluate this at 1 and at 2. Okay, so now this is going to give me the natural log of the absolute value of x, um, plus e to the negative x, okay, evaluated at 1 and 2. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2 into my antiderivative, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors for that. Um, so I'm going to get the natural log of the absolute value of 2 um, plus e to the um, negative 2 power, okay, I have that first one right there, Minus, and let's go ahead and plug in 1 into our antiderivative and see what happens. And so I'm going to get the quantity, natural log of the absolute value of 1, plus e to the negative 1 power. Okay? And so, um, you know, evaluating this and simplifying this isn't the, you know, it's not terrible, but you just kind of got to know what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to do this. Uh, the natural log of the absolute value of 2, okay, if I take the absolute value of 2, that's just 2. So this is going to give me just the natural log of 2, okay, and then plus e to the negative 2 power. And then uh, the natural log, so then I'm going to do minus um, the natural log of the absolute value of 1. The absolute value of 1 is just 1, so I'm going to do minus <coughs> the natural log of 1, and then uh, plus e to the negative 1 power, okay? Uh, now, the natural log of 1, this just goes to 0, okay? This just goes to 0, all right? So uh, my answer, then, is going to be the natural log of 2, uh, and then plus e to the negative 2, and then minus e to the negative 1, so minus e to the negative 1. Now, the thing of it is, guys, these are all three different types of numbers. I cannot combine them, okay? Okay? So I have to leave it like this. This is my answer, okay? And this is an exact answer, okay? This is exact, okay? You could plug this into your calculator and get a decimal approximation, but, um, you know, this is kind of how I'd like to see your answers, um, you know, on your homework. So um, these are a couple practice problems. I, you know, guys, this is a procedure, 
All right, all I'm all we're doing, you know, going back to it is we're taking the antiderivative, plugging in our upper bound, and then subtracting that uh, the antiderivative evaluated at our lower bound. So um, it is a procedure. It is tedious. Um, it's not too bad. It's kind of easy, but. Um, you know, it is something that we do need to be good at and do need to be able to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please get started on your homework and um, only do problems, you know, after watching this video that pertain to just evaluating integrals. Okay, so um, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.